So we're walking through the Republic Square area. It's also really close to their sort of like Champs Elysees, big shopping area, but there's also the National Museum here. Often considered as the Champs Elysees of Belgrade, Canetta Mihaela stretches from Republic Square all the way to Park Calamagdon. The street itself is Belgrade's most ancient landmark and the longest pedestrian street in the city. Today, it is filled with both high-end and local shops that sell anything from souvenir items to fashion accessories. Relatively in the city center, Republic Square is an ideal spot to snap photos of Belgrade's iconic buildings including National Museum, the National Theater, and the statue of Prince Mihailo. This is where the Sava River and the Danube meets. One of my personal favorite activities during this trip was cruising on the riverboat that floated along both Sava and Danube rivers. Sometimes it's incredibly fun to be a tourist. For an hour, the sightseeing experience included Ada Bridge, Belgrade Tower or Kula Tower, Galleria Shopping Mall, the waterfront, floating boats or splavs where river rafts are transformed into floating clubs at night. Since I'm on a time crunch, I did not have time to go inside the residence of Lubica, but it is on every list and uh, worth to check out. It takes about 30 minutes, but I have uh, 20 things <laughs> to see today because we've just been wasting time away in Belgrade <laughs> doing lots of other fun things. Residence of Lubica makes a fun stop since the building is part of the Monument of Culture of Exceptional Importance. Despite its small size, the museum gives travelers a peek into Serbian royal life during the 19th century and admiring characteristics of a Serbian Balkan style house. We're in the uh, Kalamagdan Park. It basically leads to Victor Monument and the famous Belgrade Fortress. Kalamagdan is the largest park. It is situated at the confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers. The park was once part of the town field within the Belgrade fortress used by the Ottoman army to train military before battles. Today, it is the site of sporting, art, and cultural events. Basically, when you come to the Kalamagdan Park, you can also check off two other things on your list, the Victor Monument and the Fortress. Highly regarded as the ancient heart of the city, Belgrade Fortress is the city's cultural heritage built during a long period of time, from 2nd to 18th century. Since it was destroyed and rebuilt many times, the fortress became symbolic of a city in constant evolvement and growth. The victor can be found at the Belgrade Fortress. It was built to honor Serbia's win against Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian empires during the Balkan Wars and the First World War. The Temple of St. Sava is dedicated to St. Sava, founder of the Serbian Orthodox Church and an imperative figure in medieval Serbia. It is constructed on the presumed location of St. Sava's grave, and it is the largest Orthodox Church in Serbia, one of the biggest Eastern Orthodox churches and one of the largest churches in the world. Modeled after the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, the St. Sava's Temple is embellished with 130,000 square feet of gold mosaics. This is their uh, Bohemian Quarter called uh, Skardalia and it's super cute. It's where all the artists used to live. I think there were a bunch of gypsies here too before and now it's just filled with really cute shops, tons of restaurants and bars. During the 1830s, gypsies settled in this area since a major part of it was considerably abandoned by the government. In 1854, city operators decided to construct brick buildings that instantly attracted local artisans and caterers to set up shop. After 1901, Skadalia shifted to an epicenter of artistic movement in Serbia. Renowned writers, actors, poets, and directors moved in to inns on the iconic street. 
ever since, the vintage neighborhood has often been referred to as the Montmartre of Belgrade. <laughs>